All right, I'd like to get started, please. Folks can get a seat. Okay, welcome to the uh, first midday of five midday plenaries we're going to be having. And uh, today we'll have uh, first, uh, we'll hear from our president, Jim Elser. Then there'll be uh, an award presentation and then a plenary by Roman Stucker. So um, I will just briefly introduce Jim. Jim, of course, is the president of ASLO, Jim Elser, and he's a professor of biology at uh, Arizona State University. And he's going to tell us a little bit about the many changes that are going on within ASLO. So, Jim. Okay. Testing this microphone. Is it going? Great. Well, I'm going to walk around a little bit because I have a bit of a software launch for you. So, uh, ASLO has been very busy. If you've been watching your email stream and other sources of information about our society. So I want to tell you about those things very briefly now and announce uh, many of the changes that you've already heard about, describe them a little more, and then have some new special announcements, that, some new things that we haven't yet launched. So let's take a look. So we have ASLO 2.0, but you're saying perhaps if you've been a member for a while, but I love ASLO 1.0. Don't worry, so there's lots of great things about ASLO that we all know and love. Our journals, how strong they are, the great meetings that we have, the colleagues we've developed our relationships with, the diverse programs that we offer for our students and others um, over time, and the rich history that ASLO has had for all these many uh, decades. So ASLO um, 1.0, I love it too. It's nurtured my entire career. So. Um, but there's a lot of things going on that challenge the future existence of scientific societies, including ASLO. And we've become aware of those more pressingly in recent years. And so here's just a, a list of them. Many of them surround the complex dynamics in the areas of scientific publications. And so all scientific societies are facing a very turbulent and dynamic and exciting but challenging environment for their publication models. And ASLO, um, with its wonderful journals, was part of that turbulence and trying to find a way forward. And so that's many of the things that have challenged us um, these days. And so this is something that ASLO began to consider recently very uh, comprehensively, because the one thing we could not do is fail to evolve. That was the single most dangerous thing that our society faced was not being ready and willing to do what it, take, what it takes in the current environment to be successful as a scientific society. So it's very dangerous not to have the ability to evolve because that's the road to extinction. So we're not on that road. We are on a really exciting road to um, uh, a great future uh, for our society. So here are the heroes of the story. Uh, the, many of the changes that we're talking about were initiated during the presidency of Deb Bronk who initiated the process of the ASLO comprehensive assessment that then was taken over by John Downing to implement as his, during his presidency and Paul Del Giorgio provided massive leadership in steering this committee that evaluated many of the things that ASLO was doing and looked at the landscape of professional societies around us. And perhaps you read this report which was distributed to all members, and it's on our website, and I encourage you to take a look at it. It's possibly, you know, it's not 50 shades of gray, I'll admit that, it's 50 shades of black and white. So in any case, but there's a lot of, a lot of great information in here about the world that ASLO lives in, and the world that coming that we think we need to be ready for. And, it, and it, because of this assessment, um, a very comprehensive external and internal review that many of the actions that are now going on in ASLO uh, were initiated. So the ACE report, you should check it out, it really is actually quite interesting reading. You'll learn a lot about our society as well as the things pressing on science in general. So let's talk about ASLO 2.0. What are the features? What are the things that are going to be rolling out in our society in the coming? Um, what have we already done? And what is coming still for us um, in the future? So it's, it's all that great stuff you already love. 
about Aslo 1.0. Don't worry. All the great stuff you love about Aslo is still with us, but now we have a different uh, platform on which we're going to use, uh, go forward in a different sort of approach in some of our activities. So the most important thing that we announced last year that came out of this ASLO process was the uh, publishing partnership with Wiley. And this was a very careful and difficult process that we went through, um, considering uh, uh, input from a variety of different publishing options, and they were carefully examined by a, 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 a committee, including uh, experts from the publishing field itself. And so this led us to sign a long-term relationship with Wiley, who now it provides a platform in, uh, for our journal publications and other things that we're doing. So the basic thing here is that at, we are a scientific society. We are not a publisher, that we were. So we let the publishing professionals take care of the publishing environment, and we are responsible for the science, the quality of the science, the diversity of science that finds its way into our publications, but we don't have to worry about complexities of open access and changing electronic devices, et cetera. That's Wiley's job, to get our science out to the broadest possible groups of people. So they're uh, the, uh, readers. And so that's what's going forward. The benefits for authors are many that you'll learn about, and I'll tell you more about where you can get more information about this shortly. There's going to be a single interface for all our journals, LNO Methods, LNO itself, the Bulletin, e-lectures. We'll all have the same single point of entry um, for submission, and so that's going to make things better. There are all the platforms for assessing impact that Wiley has available that will be uh, used for our journals now. We're going to smooth out um, some of the services with respect to, to paperwork, this new uh, ability to social, view social media, to gather an audience for your publication. We can now leverage, and I think the single most important thing that we are accomplishing with this move is that when you publish a paper, you want people to read it. As many people as possible, right? And so the access to, of more and more libraries and others around the world to our journals is now greatly expanded because of this partnership. And so that's, I think, would be the single biggest impact um, for authors, is that your paper in an ASLO journal will have a greater audience. What about readers? What are the benefits for readers? All of the papers will be available on all kinds of different sorts of platforms, including tablets and smartphones using this sophisticated uh, HTML coding that's available on the Wiley platform. And importantly, all of our publications will be distributed by Research for Life to uh, developing nations at no cost. And so great access in the developing world for all our journals now. What about the benefits for members? Just being a member if you're not publishing at the moment in our journals. All ASLO members get on, will now have a 35% discount on all Wiley books. You get a free online book every quarter, free online access to some of these news uh, feeds that Wiley maintains. What about the benefits for our society? Our society now benefits from stability in a very turbulent publishing world. We, as members of the ASLO board, no longer have to figure out what uh, publication metrics are and what open access means and all of these other things that we uh, don't understand because we're plankton ecologists or, uh, or, or you know, optical uh, scientists or something. So this is a wonderful benefit for us as a society, and I will point out that there is positive financial benefit for the society in this partnership as well. All right, so if you want to learn more and get into this, I invite you immediately after this plenary today, we're having a um, Meet the Editors um, uh, session and a Wiley demonstration. So a representative from Wiley will roll out and show you many of the new features that their platform provides for our journal. So I encourage you to attend that, okay? And also you can visit the Wiley Aslo booth um, uh, out in the foray anytime during the week to talk uh, to those folks, and it would be great. What else is happening? We have a new editor-in-chief for, uh, for our flagship journal, Limnology and Oceanography, Bob Howarth. He's here at the meeting. I encourage you to go talk to him and tell him your ideas. If you have great papers that you've been hearing at the meeting, tell him about them and get those papers submitted to Limnology and Oceanography because that will be the best place for them to get a great review process and great visibility. 
And so you'll have a chance to meet Bob and all the other ASLO editors at the session that I just mentioned right after this plenary. So I encourage you to stop by and see Bob. So that was a big process as well, doing a search to hire a new editor. Another important change that came out of this process is that ASLO has a new executive director. Her name is Teresa Curdo. She is very, very nice and extremely smart. And I encourage you to get to know, you to get to know her. She is here. She's been guiding the board to this very complicated set of decisions that we've been making about our platform and other things that we're doing. So I encourage you to find Teresa and introduce yourself. What else is happening with our personnel? Many of you know Adrienne Sponberg, but uh, due to these changes and everything that's happening, we have expanded her position and we have given her a new title and charge. She is now Director of Communications and Science. One thing she's doing is getting ASLO active on social media. So if you're on Twitter, there's our, um, our, uh, our ID and we now, are, of course, are on Facebook. And there's, so I encourage you to get onto Facebook, give us a like, and, uh, and uh, stay in touch with us. And, and we look forward to the conversations we can have via social media with everyone who's interested in ASLO and all the things that we're doing. We, here's something exciting, don't fall asleep. But we do have new bylaws, and as boring as that sounds, they're actually very important. And particularly, it's important that they be legal. And so some aspects of our bylaws were so out of date that they were technically illegal in the state of Wisconsin. So, um, so we now have a new set of bylaws, and we thank you if you voted uh, on the bylaws recently. Uh, they passed uh, quite nicely, but they are stream what they are, what they are, they are modern. They are built for ASLO as it exists now, as opposed to ASLO as it existed 30 years ago. And it gives us a streamlined governing structure as well. We have a new and improved strategic plan. I'm proud to say that I was in involved in developing this new strategic plan. Um, you received this handout in your packet. We have a um, description of our goals and strategies, et cetera. And I encourage you tonight to attend the membership meeting, which is in the auditorium. It looks like, what is that, 630? There will be food and drinks. So please come, you'll get a report from the ASLO officers and others about the state of the society very quickly, and then we're going to have a social event where everyone can talk with members of the board and others and talk about their strategic plan and how you can get involved uh, with ASLO and implementing it. So, that sounds pretty good, but there's more, because it's a rollout. There has to be more, right? Yeah. So, I'm very pleased to announce, for the first time, the existence of a new honors program for our uh, society. We are now have a program of ASLO fellows, both at, the, uh, at a sustaining for, uh, for the older members of our society, um, can become sustaining fellows, and our normal fellow fellows program, the criteria will be explained on the website, and I will, so we'll be communicating about this, and the nomination process will start to open this coming summer. So I encourage all of you who have been active in ASLO during your careers and recently um, to check it out, nominate yourself, or nominate a worthy colleague to become an ASLO fellow. We are going to have a redesigned website, radically redesigned, during the coming year. We're now starting that RFP process. And we're hoping that it will be fully integrated across all the ways that we interact with our membership, including in publications, membership, and meetings as well. It also, of course, will be friendly to mobile devices and um, include into social media. So that, we think, will happen toward the end of this year. Sounds great, doesn't it? Nailed it. But wait, there's more. One more very important thing, or two more very important things. I'm pleased today to announce for the first time the uh, creation of a new ASLO journal called Limnology and Oceanography Letters. This journal will add to the portfolio of our flagship, Limnology and Oceanography, our Limnology and Oceanography Methods publication, our bulletin, of course, and our also innovative ASLO e-lectures program. So right here, we're going to put a fourth one Limnology and Oceanography Letters. It will be for short format papers of high impact, we believe. It will be all open access, and it will receive the normal, rigorous peer review that ASLO is proud uh, to maintain. So I encourage you to get excited about that. 
If you have something sexy and short that's ready to go, get ready to, to uh, put it out there. I'm also pleased to announce that we are now initiating a search for the editor-in-chief of this journal. And so, is this your face someday? Or someone you know who has dynamic ideas about uh, the publication world and how aquatic sciences can be advanced in that setting? So we will be initiating a search for the editor-in-chief. Wally Fullwire is the chair of our publications committee. She'll be leading that search, so both talk to her, her if you have ideas for someone who would be great in this role. Talk to me, talk to any member of the board, talk to Teresa Curto, and we want to get your uh, suggestions about folks we should go after to become editor. It's a very exciting opportunity because it's a wide open blank uh, playing field for innovation in aquatic science publications. So we think it's a really exciting thing, fully supported by Wiley uh, and the Wiley platform. So that's an exciting uh, thing going forward. So there we have it. ASLO has been very, very busy building a new society that can sustain itself into the future. Uh, we want to empower our members. We want to be forward-looking and adaptive, modern, rigorous, and uh, communicative with, other, uh, with everyone, operating on our guiding principles, which you see in, in that um, uh, brochure that you received. So it's, gonna be, it's been an exciting time. It has been an exhausting time to be a member of the ASLO board. We have accomplished a lot. There's still more things to do, but we know that with the support of our members, we're going to have um, a wetter and better uh, ASLO in the future. So thank you very much. Please come see us and talk to us and give us your feedback, reactions, and ideas, and we uh, ask for your involvement and continued devotion to ASLO. So thank you very much.